Well, our tribe, of course, was relocated, um, some of them five times. Um, I, the particular, uh, my particular family group uh, was relocated four times. So <clears throat> our original Aboriginal area, <coughs> pardon me, was the Great Lakes. And the, um, the tribes that are, uh, have had almost perpetual um, occupation of their lands, they have um, places that are considered sacred, that have a history of, uh, of, of events that are tied to their religion or their social structure or their clans or those kinds of things. So we, we were one of those tribes that were, we were moved so often through four generations that we lost those landmarks, I guess, that could be deemed to be a part of our, uh, of our Aboriginal culture. So to rebuild a, a respect for the culture or to, to uh, bring back an understanding of the culture, uh, we were all one tribe with the Ojibwe and the, the Odawa, uh, the, the Potawatomi were, the Three Fires Council. And our um, experience in the Great Lakes, we were all Medewin uh, pipe carrier people. And then the Prairie Potawatomi, who were in Illinois, were relocated to Kansas about the same time we were. And they were uh, big drum religion people. Um, we were very early converts to Christianity. Um, in fact, almost at the time that Jean Nicolette came to the Great Lakes and discovered us in the midst of the Beaver Wars and driven all the way around the lake to uh, where Green Bay is now on the Door Peninsula. But without those, um, I'd say, cultural anchor spots, I guess, uh, we were faced with uh, the, the whole business of bringing back traditional beliefs and behavior within several contexts. One, since we were almost a, entirely a Christian tribe, the, the culture had to be presented in a way that was not uh, offensive to to people's uh, Christian beliefs, and we believe that there isn't a conflict between the old ways we had of worship and, and the way we do it now. And then we had to to um, convince people that the language and the culture and the ceremonies and everything were actually their birthright, that it belonged to them. And we have an awful lot of people who were three and four generations removed from even Shawnee, Oklahoma, where we ended up because they were relocated by the Bureau of Indian Affairs in the, in the 1940s, 1950s, or moved during World War II, or moved during the Dust Bowl days to California. Uh, we have about 4,000 members in California. So <clears throat> that bringing all those people together um, to regain their uh, traditional beliefs within a context they would accept, and, and, as, and that as part of um, helping them to reform their tribal identity. Um, th we felt that it was incumbent on us to, to bring back as much of the old ways as people would accept and once they understood that and began to practice that, uh, we had even stopped our naming cycle, um, the two generations before me. Uh, I didn't get named until I was 40. So once we began all that uh, again, um, we sort of went back to the original seven clans of the Medewin and derived our names from there and did as much historical research. But once, once the culture became the drawing card, then we had the opportunity to, uh, to go out and explain to people that their, their tribe's political renaissance, I guess you would say, um, would, uh, would come about if um, you know, we started to recognize that tribal membership 
and uh, and th there's the word tribal and there's that word membership the two that that uh, earlier on the conversation they were saying that you had to drop a quarter in the jar every time you said that but our nation's citizenship uh, they had to realize that there was a difference between tribal membership and national citizenship and that being uh, a citizen Potawatomi or a citizen of the citizen Potawatomi nation was a legal and political right that was given to them by the U.S. Constitution and subsequent decisions of the U.S. Supreme Court and acts of Congress. So the dual citizenship concept, once we sold that, and once we sold the idea that they owned that culture and that it was uh, a, a wonderful culture and it was worth preserving, and the language, and to, to help relearn the language, once all of that became known to them, then the reformation of the tribal constitution from the old 1936 Folklum Indian Welfare Act constitution became a good deal easier. The old constitution had led us to a tremendous period of, uh, I mean, literally generations of dysfunctional government. And um, the, we had two year terms of office and we would change governments virtually every every 12 months and it was no one wanted to run because there was so much acrimony in the meeting no one wanted to go violence even and so the things had deteriorated down around where our tribal offices were in our in our our last reservation there in Oklahoma things had deteriorated down to the point that those folks of good judgment and wisdom and elders didn't want to come so we were not, uh, we were not only a dysfunctional government, but when it did function at all, it functioned very poorly. So, uh, and we were very poor. We, we, had, we had lost our land base because of the government. Uh, once we settled on the reservation, we had about 900 square miles. And the government announced that if we left our land in trust, that we would be deemed incompetent to conduct our own affairs. And that meant contracts and checking accounts and banking accounts and basically subject to the whims of the BIA agency superintendent who could, without a re appeal or a hearing, deem you a, a, uh, an incompetent and you wouldn't be able to, to you know, utilize your property. So that was a huge incentive for our people to take their land out of trust. And then the government said, well, the jurisdiction of the tribe is all the land that's in trust. So we went from 900 square miles down to about 4,500 acres of individual uh, trust property in the 80 acre allotments and two and one half acres of land held in common by the tribe. And we had about $500 in the bank, 550, and 75 a month coming in. And we met once a quarter to uh, enroll people in, in an abandoned trailer house that the Bureau of Indian Affairs owned. And that was the whole tribal government, my, 